Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about Cradle Point routers. What's special about them is they use 4G as their mode of reaching out to the internet. These are becoming very popular with retail and small locations because they give the ability to provide that network connectivity for the establishment without the need for a wireline connection. So this model we're looking at right here is a 1400. It's probably one of the more um, deluxe models. Brand new, they probably run you about four to $500. I've seen them used on eBay though for as little as a hundred and a half. And so what you've got is most of the components you would have with a router, you know, you've got your, your, um, your, your switch ports and um, you know, some link lights. But what's unique about it is that inside is a SIM chip. So there's a slot in between these two components, right? This, this thing comes off. There's a slot in there where the SIM chip goes and there's a Verizon SIM chip in there that is providing the network connectivity. So it's using these little 4G paddles right here as a way of reaching out to the internet. So one of the things I thought I would do is go ahead and show you a speed test because one of the things I know I was very skeptical about when I first heard about these and first started seeing these is I thought, well, what about the speed and reliability? Well, I think what's happened is that over the last, oh, eight or so years, the speeds have picked up a lot and also the, uh, the, the reliability of, of the uh, cellular connections has gotten pretty good. So over here I've got uh, DSL speed test, DSL net, or DSL report speed test. And let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run a speed test for, um, Okay, we're back. Looks like we're going to end up with about 12 megabits down and six up. That's pretty respectable and certainly enough to run a small site if you don't need video. So if all we're doing is just POS transactions, email, some light web browsing, and uh, maybe vo maybe even voice over IP phones, this would be plenty. And I know that this goes on because I've seen it with my own eyes in several locations. So um, there's some factors to consider though when we're thinking about this. So even though it does come with these antennas on here, uh, it's not gonna guarantee you reception. There's about three different things you need to think about if you wanna look at this. The first thing that's gonna affect it is the strength of the signal in the area where you want to use it. And what I recommend doing is to do a site survey ahead of time, go to the exact spot where you're going to plan to install something like this and get a phone from each one of the major carriers. So, so you know, get or borrow um, a Verizon phone, a Sprint phone, a T-Mobile phone, AT&T phone, and find out which one is the best served in that exact spot. And that's important because even just moving something as much as like, you know, five or 10 feet to a different spot can make a big difference, um, especially in places like malls or shopping centers where there's a lot of metal which that leads me to my second point, which is that if there is a lot of metal in the building, it's gonna have a big impact, a detrimental impact on how well this can run. Now, even though it does have these paddle antennas, there's actually, you can actually take them off and replace them with, a, uh, with an external antenna. You can actually get an external antenna and hook it up to that and then put the antenna in some other part of the uh, of the space where you want to use this to improve the reception. All right, but begin by finding out which carrier is the strongest uh, in that in that space where you want to use it. Now, this is all great. I've seen this used most typically in small businesses, retail locations, and it's great because you don't have to have the wire line, so you don't have to pay for you know, a cable connection. It's also great for seasonal things where you don't want to have to pay for setting up the wire line only to use it for one or two or three months and then just have to turn it back off again. These are, you know, highly portable, uh, very rapidly deployed. Um, the other thing they can do that's really cool about them is, so not only can they use the SIM chip that's inside, in fact, I'll go ahead and show you where that, how that works, um, is that you can also use like an external USB modem. So this is a, uh, what is it, like a Novatel or a Sierra Wireless. And so what happens is this little piece comes off if it's not screwed on. Let me see if it's screwed on. Okay, just took those screws out. So this little piece comes off right here. And see, you've got these USB ports that you can put the, 
the external modem into. So where you could operate it just like this without this other module. Okay. But if you do have this module, this is the 400 add-on module. There's a spot right there where a little SIM card goes. Okay. Now there is another way you can run these. So if you don't want to do the SIM card, you don't have the, the, uh, external USB 4G modem. There is another way, but I certainly would not recommend it for, um, for a commercial environment. And that is that you can actually use um, the hotspot Wi-Fi. So if I take a phone, I put it into the hotspot mode where it's, it's broadcasting, you know, Wi-Fi signal is that these devices come with what's known as Wi-Pipe. I guess that's probably their their brand or their their trademark little name for this. And what that does is it picks up the signal from the hotspot, uses that as its internet connection, and then turn around and shares that connection back out to the other side of the router, which is through the switch ports or through the ethernet facing the local area network. Okay, so three modes, SIM chip, external uh, USB modem, or the, uh, the Y pipe, as they call it. Now, wanted to show you something else that's kind of cute. I have one of these that's a lot smaller. It's my own personal, this one is my own personal little travel one. Um, this is a model CTR35. It's just got the one ethernet port on it. And it too can use the external USB modem or the, um, the, the, uh, the Y pipe. I actually have, have it set up for my, for my cellular. So you might be also asking yourself, well, Hey, you know, why can't I just use one of these? If all you were doing was just running maybe one Wi-Fi device, like a POS, you could probably get away with that. But if you're really trying to run multiple devices, plus maybe a voice over IP phone, plus you want to have a distributed network, meaning that devices are going to be more than 10 or 15 or 20 feet away from the source of the, of the, uh, the hotspot, then this isn't going to work. So the Ethernet handoff gives you the ability to go into other devices. Now, the other thing I see a lot of, too, is that these are sometimes used as failovers. So the people, the, the location may have, for instance, a regular router with a cable or DSL connection as their main circuit, and then they use this as their failover. So that goes down, the routing then switches over to the cradle point and goes out through the cellular connection. All right, so I thought you might find that interesting. Appreciate you watching. See you next time.